Welcome to Prepper Nation. I'm John. Thank you very much for being here. Please forgive the no video. Um, really, really tough time in my life right now, folks. And thank you for the prayers. Let me go ahead and say that. And I hope to eventually be back on camera. But honestly, I don't know if I ever will be or not. We'll see. But I do want to say thank you and, and a special shout out to my dad. I just talked to my dad on the phone. That doesn't happen very often. And, uh, oh, man, I love you. <laughs> so I'm going into this with zero notes. Uh, as it says on the artwork, it's from the Ponderosa. I'm sitting in my desk out back here at the Ponderosa, uh, which is what I like to call the property for you long timers. And again, no notes whatsoever i've just got a lot of a lot of stuff on my mind a lot of thoughts most of it uh seems to kind of orbit around the chaos in and around israel right now um now you know to be to be fair that region of the world has been at war for so long that it's I would be hard pressed to go back and find a time when they were not having a war in the Middle East, specifically that area of the Middle East. And I've been on this channel time and again saying, hey, we don't need to talk about war. We don't need to speculate about things. We don't really need to talk about war until there's a serious threat of the United States being dragged into it. Uh, directly. So a as it pertains to Europe, we're in that one as well with Ukraine and Russia, but we're there indirectly, as you folks know. Uh, we are funding that war. We are funding the livelihoods of many politicians uh, in Ukraine. We are funding the retirements of plenty of people in Ukraine, all kinds of funding packages going out the window. But with Israel, it is quite different. Israel and the surrounding area. And just so you, you guys and gals know, I'm not here to make a case for one side or the other or to take a side. I'm trying to be as objective as possible because I know I'm not trying to fence rod, but, but I know it's a very delicate subject when we're talking about Israel, when we're talking about, uh, you know, the, the surrounding countries, Gaza and, and all of this stuff. So, um, I'm not trying to get up on anyone's feelings. I'm not trying to take a position. I'm just saying things are getting very nasty. And the difference there is, as we're going to talk about, the United States is about to be sucked into the vacuum of war, I believe, in the Middle East. So a couple of days ago, y'all know how I like to do it here at Prepper Nation. I like to sit on it. I like for it to marinate until the details come out. Okay. So Israel was hit. Uh, it was a, I believe it was a playground or a basketball court, something like this, and children died. It's very unfortunate. That is part of war. I hate war. Let, let me just get off on a, a rant here for a second, okay? Not a fiery rant, but a rant. I hate war. I have a degree in history. My major is in World War II and, and war strategy in general, and yet I hate war. Because so many innocent people are affected during wartime. And so this took place in Israel. Immediately for me, red flags went up, which we're going to talk about in just a moment. Israel retaliated. Uh, they took out a high-ranking terrorist. And the issue is they're going into other countries now. You know, sure, the terrorist was there. He was a target of opportunity. And this guy had been linked to many bad things here uh, with U.S. soldiers and things. So I get it. But at the same time, you're, you're going into airspaces of other countries to accomplish this. And so now you have NATO countries in the Middle East threatening to go to war with Israel. And so here are the red flags I'm talking about. Okay. And I, again, I'm not trying to speculate. This was just how I thought this was my thought process. So first of all, you have a missile 
that hits this this playground or this play area that takes kids out. My initial thought was, what happened to the Iron Dome? Right? The Iron Dome is this spectacular technical marvel that takes down, I don't know what the actual percentage is, but you fire 100 rockets, this thing's going to get 99 of them or 99 plus. Okay? Plus you have sirens and things going off. So as I'm watching the footage, number one, I'm like, what happened to the Iron Dome? Why was the Iron Dome not even activated? Second, they were saying, of course, this is mainstream media news reporting here in the West. So I have to go with that. Uh, this is another reason that I'm not taking a position one way or the other, folks. I don't live in the Middle East. I have to base my own opinions off of all of this secondhand information. And though I hate to do it, that's the only way I can do it. That's the only way most of us can do it. So the second thought was, you know, there was a shelter, a bomb, like an air raid shelter, 20 feet from this, this play area. So no siren went off. These, these kids, uh, the people that were there as well, I guess there were some adults there. Nobody had any advance warning for whatever reason. The Iron Dome completely failed. And you have this travesty happen. So that was red flag number one and two for me. I don't see the Iron Dome failing, you know, with a one-off missile. And I don't see the air, you know, the air raid sirens and stuff just not working or not being activated. Two red flags. So then within what seemed like an hour, Israel was already pointing the finger. Israel and the United States were already pointing the finger at a terrorist organization. Okay, now again, to be fair, maybe they were behind it. But I can honestly say I, I don't recall many times when a terrorist group denies responsibility. When you stop and when you think about that for a second, what is the entire purpose of a terrorist organization? I mean, on a fundamental level, when you really break it down, they're trying to strike terror. They're trying to do heinous things. They're trying to, usually they rush to admit it or to claim responsibility. This particular group is throwing their hands up saying, hey, we had nothing to do with this. We don't even know what you're talking about. That normally would not happen, especially with Israel. Because you have to remember, this group, this entire region, they don't like Israel. You would think they would rush to the front of the line, claim responsibility, beat their hands on their chest. Red flag number three, they're not doing that. They're doing the total opposite. And of course, shortly after, um, Israel and the United States point this out, you know, they're responsible, they retaliate. Now, again, maybe they have very credible evidence that they're just not putting on mainstream media. You know, right now, it seems like, trust me, bro, is the credible evidence that's at least being spoon fed to the public. But maybe they have super, super evidence that, that points to this terrorist group. Okay. In that case, I can see where Israel would want to retaliate. But here's the problem, and here's where the U.S. is now involved directly. Because I think a lot of us are about to be affected by this. Again, the vacuum of war. Getting back to the opening of the podcast here, or whatever you want to call it, video, podcast, pre-recorded, premiere, whatever. Whatever. I'm just a dude at his desk who hit record, right? <laughs> um. Here, herein lies the problem. Nothing but war has happened in this region for as long as history has been recorded, basically. Escalation after escalation after escalation. When is the last time you can remember this region de-escalating things? Because I really can't, I can't remember a time when leaders in this region were stepping up saying, hey, Let's all negotiate. Let's all come to the negotiating table. No, that's not how it works over there. Now that this guy has been taken out, this uh, leader of this terrorist organization, what do you think is going to happen next? 
they're going to escalate things. And the United States is sitting there saying, hey, if anybody jumps on Israel, they've, they've been public about this. If anybody jumps on Israel, we're going to get involved. Now, uh, if Harris should win president of the United States, that may totally change. But I don't think that it will. Uh, Harris was asked the other day, you know, when she was getting ready for, I think, of, for uh, her first or second rally or something like that. She, she even said, you know, Israel has a right to defend itself. But we need to focus on ne negotiations rather than war. Folks, they're not going to negotiate themselves out of a war in the Middle East. If they do, it's going to be something we've never seen before. Instead, what we're going to continue to see is escalation after escalation after escalation until the United States has to get directly involved. And then we're going to be sucked into another decades, plural, long war. And this comes at a really bad time here in the United States because we are so, as y'all know, we're so fractured. We're so divided. People are arguing about the stupidest things here in the United States. Now, obviously, there, there are a lot of serious issues as well. And those need to be hashed out. Don't get me wrong. But people will argue over crabgrass in 2024, especially on social media. One group hates the other group. The other group hates the first group. It seems to never end. This is just going to add to the wood pile of hate. You know, getting right down to it, okay? Look at how fractured we are. Look at how much hate is in our society, folks, and how things come across as hopeless. And now we're getting ready to add a war in the Middle East on top of that. How are we going to fund this war? Are we going to ask people to pay more taxes. I think the average citizen here in the United States thinks it's around $107,000 that they're on the hook for if we're going to pay off the national debt. The problem is not every single American is paying taxes. So that $107,000 is actually substantially higher. Each one of you that are paying taxes, you're on the hook for a lot of money if our government is going to recover financially. And, you know, let, let's not play Halloween here. Our government, at least the way it's going, is not going to recover financially. We can't afford another war. And that's without even considering the human cost. Again, folks, I hate war. I hate war. I hate to see this. This is just, I guess it's what I get for not bringing notes to the table or the desk in this case. Not only do I hate war. Really, the the state of this country, it makes me sick. It makes me sick that everybody's at everybody's throat. I don't I, it's hard to imagine how we got here. I know it's it's happened progressively over time, and it's taken a long time to get here. The mainstream media has done a lot, you know, to rabble rouse and get us here. I totally get it. But we can only blame the main, mainstream media so much because we allowed it to happen here in the United States. I just want to go back to a time when we're Americans first. And I don't know how we get back there. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying that's possible. I'm not smoking the hopium. But deep down, I really want, I want to be there again, where people care about each other, where you care about your neighbors where we're not constantly fighting back and forth. seems like every time I get on uh, Twitter or X, that place is the worst, by the way. I just happen to have a huge reach over there. So occasionally I'll log in. Not very often anymore. Top five or six trends are always political-based. And it's always people screaming at one another. And if we're screaming back and forth at one another nonstop, Nothing will ever get accomplished. And the smart people out there that are listening know that what I'm about to say is the truth. 
as long as Americans are screaming back and forth and we are tribalized, the people that really control America get to stay in power. So I don't know. Take it for what it's worth. That's my message um, this evening. Y'all take care. God bless.